Welcome to Train Planet, the game that calls itself the ultimate train sim. We will be the judge of that. Um, welcome to this video. This is LWD Adnan. And this is my completely new and first look at this game. I've seen a couple of content creators put some videos up themselves, but I've never actually watched any of those videos. So I have no idea what to expect. I have no idea what we're going to be coming against, what I'm hopefully going to be blown away by, but we'll find out together. I'll be making direct comparisons to Train Sim World and Simrel, as I have a decent bit of experience in both of those games, especially Train Sim World. But we'll also be seeing where this game can excel in its own right, what it does promise in better than those two games, and what it might do worse in. So, first things first, I'm going to want to turn down the music. Now, I'm not sure what's going on here with the menu. I do have a steering wheel connected. Now, I wonder if the steering wheel is causing this issue here. Let me unplug the steering wheel and see if that has any effect. Right, so I've unplugged my steering wheel, and as you can see, the issue has is now ceased. So, I guess that's something to make note of if you're wanting to play this game with any peripherals attached. They will affect the game. Now, uh, let's go to audio. I guess let's go to... I'm very surprised that there's no menu music option or just a music option in general. Okay, it's on the use, user interface volume. Um, now, user interface volume, I would assume regularly would be sometimes as you go over different options, as you click something, as you just heard there, there's like a sound. So that's what I assume would be the user interface volume. I, it ends up being via the music, so I guess that's good to know. We've turned that down now. As we're here in the settings, let's actually see what we have. So on the gameplay, we've got C for emergency break, which I will activate. I use C for um, and PZB during, um, you know, playing Train Sim World. So we'll have those on for now. Uh, I don't know whether it'd be smart to send them off until we get sort of a, a hold of the game. Well, until we get more of an idea of what we're coming up against. But let's just keep those on for now. Camera reaction sensitivity, no idea what that's going to do, obviously, other than react. But what that translates to, we're going to have to find out. I'll leave that as it is for now. Road traffic, let's send that on. Passenger traffic, let's send that on. And railway traffic, let's send that on as well. I don't know why they would be off by default. Interface, metric units, we'll leave it at that for now, not too fast. We are playing at 4K, as you can see, we have a plenty of, uh, of options, as you would expect. Quality set to medium, now I'm going to set this to ultra and see how we fare. Now I have just turned on an FPS counter and we are getting 60, I am playing on a 60 hertz monitor. So we are going to see how my computer performs, just for, just for a, a rough idea for you guys to compare maybe to your own systems when we see what the performance will be like. I'm currently running a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with an RTX 3080 Ti from NVIDIA uh, for the graphics card and 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz RAM. So should be pretty decent. The CPU is water cooled, so there's not going to be any issues with the heat. So um, we'll see. I run Train Sim World pretty well. Simrel. I have to turn on the settings a little bit from uh, from the absolute ultra top settings, but it still looks fantastic. So we'll see what, what we'll do here for now. Uh, we'll table anti-alias. It's not too important, especially as we're playing at 4K. Shadows, let's, let's turn those very high and just see sort of what, what, what we deal with. Uh, textures at full resolution. Text streaming is on. Full screen is on. Audio, we've just had a look at that. Input. So we've got a little bit of a con little uh, guide here. So forward and backward and also reverse is the W and the S key is the opposite of it, uh, I would assume. A and D is the thrust, which is a pretty strange uh, word to use in a train game. I think that's more, uh, you know, applicable to flight simulators, but uh, yeah, nothing too too bad there. C for with a Z key, sanding with the X key and change camera with C. Now, I am of course used to playing with Train Sim World key binds, and I've even set my Simrel key binds to mimic what I've got in Train Sim World for the most part. Now, I wish there was a way to edit this but it doesn't seem so. And we have Sifa, which is well and good, although it's in quite an odd place for me. I'm used to having it on the Q key, but I'm not seeing anything for PZB, which is slightly uh, worrying. So I wonder if that's something that we can only control manually in the train, and we'll get more to that uh, when we once we get into the game. Horn, space, uh, I mean, for the most part, I think it makes sense. Doors, TNY, 
I mean, why and you for train sim worlds? It's not too, too different. Pantograph, loco break. I'm glad the brakes are, are in the same place. To move around the cabin, it's the arrow keys. And the K and L are for the main power switch. So we'll try and remember what we can. But I, I feel like we'll have to uh, refer back to that at least once. Go to accounts. I guess we'll change that to LWD Adnan. Uh, which I can't do. Reset. Um, one moment, please. Right, so we are back after that strange uh, occurrence, let's say. It seems like the reset button was just... Well, my, my, my settings, our settings have been reset, so we need to go through those again. But it seems like we, do, we can't change our name. I'm trying to change the name and nothing's happening. And reset will reset all your settings and close the game. Very strange. I guess it takes away from the quit option. So let me do, let me set all of these again and we'll be right back. Right. So after a short little while, we are back. All the settings have been set as we set them earlier. And we have two options I'm seeing here, right? Where we have a journey mode and scenarios very akin to uh, Train Sim World. And it seems like we have two options. The, uh, the BR218 and the BR186. Now, uh, before we go and check these out um, properly, I want to go back and just see what qualifications holds for us. So, it seems that uh, there's almost a, a leveling up system in, in a way with regards to every train. So, right now we're at level zero, it seems. And you get to level one, two, three, and you become instruct. You, you reach an instructor level. Now, I can't click any of these options to our left, competence, breaking, and mastering. But what I assume is that these are basically a training module and they get more advanced until you get through and unlocking everything. And uh, I guess the only way to find out is to begin. So we'll start off with the qualifications and then we'll go back and see what the journey and scenario um section has for us so let's start with the uh the 218 so we've got difficulty easy uh it's 23 minutes with two stops and we're beginning at eight o'clock going from duren to eschweiler hauptbahnhof now please forgive my german pronunciations i am a native english speaker uh, the only German I know is from Train Sims. So we've got a little how to play here, which I guess is quite similar to the uh, the guide we saw earlier. But also it's almost like a, uh, it's like an instruction manual almost. So realistically, you would do all of these in order. Um, the raised pantograph is P and it's allowed me to click it, but I'm not sure why. That's quite strange that I can click these and they will remain highlighted, but they don't seem to be doing much. So uh, anyway, first things first, I guess I'll be able to access this at any point. So let's start from, from the beginning. Let's raise the pantograph and turn on the main power switch. So here's our little map. I love the detail. So as you can see, the full run, which I don't think we'll be doing, would be from Duren to Aachen. I hope I've pronounced that right as well. But we'll only be going as far as Eschweiler, which is about halfway, uh, halfway down. So we've got some train information here. It's pretty decent. We've got some weather information as well. And... Um, a reward as well, so we're going to get 1,000 what looks like credits, I guess, and uh, 100 XP. As I do continue, now if I was to head back into the menu, I can no longer access the uh, that little guide that we had up. Now, I thought I would be able to access that, um, but it seems not. So do bear that in mind. I don't know whether it would be worth taking a picture <laughs> and um, having it on hand, putting it on either a secondary monitor or something of the like. But yeah, you're pretty much on your own once you go past that menu. So let's get straight into it. Continue. So first things first, I want to see performance. We're currently sitting on 36 frames, which as you can see, isn't great. It's not really smooth. There's quite a lot of judder. So let me just, uh, let's see what we can do in the settings to sort that out. Uh, let's go ahead and let's go down to, let's go down to high and see what that does for us. I'm not going to touch anything else. Um, just set the setting on high. Now we have 39 FPS here on the FPS counter. But let's see what that translates to in game, whether that will change. It doesn't change, no. So still saying a roughly uh, 39 to 40 FPS. Let's uh, bring it down just a little bit. And let's try and get as close to 60 as possible. This computer is very capable of running 60. So I'm gonna turn shadows to medium at this point uh, and quality to medium as well. And let's see what that, what that will do for us. There is a little bit of a pause. I'll definitely turn V-Sync back on. Um, we are now at a, a healthy 50 frames per second, I think. Um, I think we, we can we, we, we can uh, we can manage with 50 frames per second. So from first things first, we have a working Ebula. 
Now, this is something we don't have in Train Sim World. I was going to say Sim Rail, but to be honest, we do have a little, uh, like a handheld timetable. So I, I guess that, that makes up for it. But it's great to see an actual working uh, Ebula and right clicking on it zooms in and I guess right clicking anywhere. Yep. Right clicking anywhere zooms you in. And I also read at the bottom. Well, I also notice at the bottom we have instructions. So start diesel, press and hold P for one second. So let's get to that. Got diesel starting on the right hand side. All the important information is seemingly on the right hand side. We have our signal information. Um, a map similar to what we see in Train Sim Classic actually uh, on the very top. A, uh, we have a speed, sort of a, a, a funny little speed gauge, our brake pressures, our bottom. I'm not sure exactly what's on our bottom right. It looks like the, the train, like an image of the train. Uh, but I'm not sure exactly what is being represented there. I guess we'll find out. We've got our destination and our, I guess, timetable to the left and our instructions above that. So to be fair, let's open our doors as I, as I talk. It does seem pretty cluttered. Now, I do appreciate the, the wealth of information. But it does seem very, very cluttered, and I couldn't see anything in its settings to uh, manage the uh, the HUD and what you want to appear. Things which both uh, Simrail and Train Sim World do allow you to do. Now, we can actually just straight, you know, manually click on on buttons. It seems um, not everything, as you can see, for example, these two here. I'm not sure exactly what they would do IRL, but they don't do anything in game. Uh, we have instrument lights, which we can turn on. Um, I'm not sure what instruments are getting turned on. We have some funny uh, graphical errors going on here. I'm not exactly seeing like a loading. Uh, so our doors are open. Now it just says the uh, at the very bottom, it just says when boarding finished, close right door, press Y. But I'm not sure how I know when boarding is finished. Now I've hit number two. It's given us like an outside camera that we're using the uh, the arrow keys to fly around with. So there's no passengers current. Oh, we can just go through walls as well. It's pretty interesting. Um, fairly detailed, uh, fairly detailed train interiors to be fair. No end, no engine room. Yeah, fairly detailed. So uh, our three cam, very similar to what we have in Simrail. Four cam, five. This is pretty nice actually. And we, and, we, and we also get to see the graphics. I'm actually pretty uh, impressed, especially with us sitting at medium settings. Um, I feel like everything looks pretty nice. The ballast looks nice. We've got some, uh, we've got some litter in the ballast. That it looks like, or it could just be some. It could just be spray paint. Whatever it is, it does add to the uh, to the immersion. Actually, I've never seen that before in any uh, of the games that I've personally played. We've got a uh, a nice difference in in color as well. Different types of ballast being used. That's nice to see as well. Um, the signals look pretty nice and bright. The clouds look a bit dark. Now, I don't know whether they're just simulating rain clouds. Uh, but they do seem a little too dark for my liking, to be completely honest. The sky looks alright. Um, yeah, just textures in general look pretty good, to be honest. Uh, 7 cam, nothing. 8, 9 and 0 don't do anything. So we'll go back to the 1 cam, which puts us in the inside. Um, so let's see what we have. Anti-skid off. Um... See if we can turn on. I'm not sure how to. Uh... Now I'm clicking C for my, my with the left mouse button. Nothing's happening. I'm clicking on my right. It's obviously, it just zooms in. So I'm not sure how you activate things. Uh, I'm pretty sure I activated the quote unquote. Um... Yeah. So you can activate activate stuff from here, pretty simply. A very decent light actually. I do love the uh, the the uh, light emissives. But I don't think that's very necessary right now. Um. Failed station arrival reserve time. So it looks like that because we um, just hung around the station for a bit, uh, we ended up failing this scenario, which I find strange, very strange. I don't see why uh, sitting at one location would fail the scenario, especially with it just being a training scenario. And uh, at worst, I would expect to be punished for arriving at the next destination late, but I wouldn't expect to be punished for just remaining uh, at one place with so that strange. Yeah, not great in my opinion. I think that's something that should probably be reconsidered. But let's give it a go and let's, and let's actually get moving this time and see what the driving's like. All right, no playing games this time. Let's get straight into it. We hold P for one second. Right, let's open the right side doors for boarding. 
let's see if anything over here oh my god there's a terrible vibration all of a sudden is that if that was the engine start i'm impressed that was very impressive i thought that i thought something was something was horribly wrong there but it turns out i think that was just the uh, the engine the engine starting which is very 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 impressive very impressive i have never that's not something i've seen in any simulator that i've played be it uh any of the truck simulators any of the train simulators just make sure our brakes are everything is set in position Yeah, so there's something I've never experienced in Simro and Train Sim World, whereby both of those games also have, um, you know, cold starts for their trains. So I'm I'm super impressed with that. I'll be very honest. That's actually taken me quite a bit by surprise. Right, so we're on the move now. We see our speed on the right. I'm not quite sure how to read the signals on the top right. I assume that they're just um, I assume they're just distance not distance notification. And I guess what we see what, what we see on the top bar is uh is the actual signal itself so it's like all the signals are green if i've understood it correctly let's turn the thrust all the way up to uh maximum thrust this is thrust position number 14 you can use this position only when speed is above 15 kilometers per hour for decrease thrust press d that's very very handy to know so it seems like you also get tips um on how to properly maneuver the train it's not just about press w to set the train forward or press a to increase thrust but it's also okay press a and then after one second you can continue this is position 14 where you can only be in this position when you know so and so is, is in order so i really do like that let's start breaking all right so we'll, we'll, we'll put the thrust back to zero so what i thought were the signals i think i'll just stopping points perhaps oh no I, th I think i think i'm wrong there i think i, th I think those uh, those lollipop looking things are signals right so we're getting a, we're getting a little um little little bit a little bit of train in here um at the bottom and we've gone into emergency which has a uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it gave us minus 100 points on the top left. Right, so wait a moment before increasing thrust. Yeah, so it, re it really does seem to actually teach you not just what the controls are, but how to apply them to the given train. And now I wonder if this is something that we're seeing right now in the early days of the game, or if this is something that we'll continue to see with every single train where we'll see a, a, a specific, a, a catered, a very specifically catered set of instructions per train. And I also wonder if this is something that we'll see every single time we get into, we, we get into, into, into a train or whether it'll be a thing whereby it will only happen once and it's up to us to remember those particular those particular um, set of instructions and if that's the case then I wonder if it's possible to reactivate that guidance what I've also noticed as well is when CIFA needs to be acknowledged we actually have a bar because uh, with CIFA there is a, 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 a time limit on how long you have to acknowledge it and if you don't do so then the uh, the train comes to a stop the brakes will apply automatically and i'm glad that we have a timer to actually have a visual representation um of that time now i am keeping an eye on the uh, on the ebula and whether it's going to move or not um, with an ebula it should automatically scroll as you're going so it displays information relative to where you are on the map but so far in terms of foliage as you can see on both sides of the track to our left and to our right there is just such a fullness so much life um, in the greenery the milepost right here for example it's not just pure white there's damage there's wear on every single one the thing the thing with simrail and uh, trains and world is that with all of these posts and speed warnings and signboards and, and whistle posts all of them are in absolutely pristine condition which of course in reality would very rarely uh, be the case but we, we very clearly have a gradients on the top map. Now the 2%, I don't know whether that's referring to the gradient 
or whether that's um, another measure. But it seems like as we've increased um, in steepness, the 2% has jumped to 4%. So I can only imagine that that is indeed measurement of gradient. We do have a fair bit of suspension in play. We can see that there's, there's a nice little bounce as the train moves along the, uh, the tracks. And it's also visible from the outside as well. You can see it there. The carriages do seem a lot, a lot more stiffer. And I am noticing a lack of traffic, but I do wonder if, if that's just because um, we are on a, a training module. Our frame rate is not too bad. We are still around 50 right now. We've, we're, we're around 48. Had a brief drop to the low 40s, but we're back up to the high 40s again. I do think that's an area that, that could be improved upon personally, but I do understand that with scenery like this and with all the physics that is going on in the background, I do understand it can be very tasking. And if you do want a steady 60 frames per second, you will have to make some sacrifices graphically. Right, so we're just approaching Eschweiler right now. not many people about and I've just noticed under on the left hand side I wish there was a way I could free my mouse so I could sort of show you guys specifically what I talk about every now and again where are my lights actually I thought I turned them on clearly not but uh, on the left hand side where the uh, the station names are there is a timer for boarding and uh, that was something maybe I didn't notice earlier if it was displayed uh, when I was a little bit confused about how long exactly we should be uh, awaiting boarding but that was it for the first uh, set of the first qualification run as you can see we've got a star i don't know whether that's uh, one star out of others or whether that's the star just to show completion um let's move on to diesel locomotive one because i'm not sure exactly uh, this will be different from the from the first first run well as we can't start it let's go over to the 186 and see what awaits us over there so once again, we're heading over to Eshwal. If you've played both Train Sim World or SimRail, you'll be somewhat familiar with the interior. Uh, so let's raise the pantograph, press P for that. I guess let's hold it for a while. Uh, turn on the main power switch, press L. You can just hear the, uh, the motors come on there. And let's open our right hand side doors. We've got one minute 26 we need to leave so we've got a time on our radio doesn't seem to be doing more than that though uh clicking it doesn't do anything as well we've got our system display here none of these seem to be doing anything uh we've got our main display over here let's see if we can uh hit anything here nope doesn't seem that way and uh we've got our ebula once again More or less everything that you would really find, that you would find in Train Sim World, uh, is here. Access to air conditioning as well. Now once I click on an area, uh, it doesn't seem like I can do much. We've got our headlights on this time. I mean, in my opinion, it's, it's fairly detailed, uh, the scenery directly, you know, uh, the scenery that, you, that we should be worried about, that we would see from the, uh, from the cabin or from the stations, I think is pretty well done. So boarding is completed. So let's close our right doors. 
It's released. Make sure the brakes are released. And let's get moving. So it looks like that. Um, it looks like the bar on the on the bottom right, uh, below the train, is the brake pressure. So we've reached the uh, Eschweiler and nothing really to report on. Although something that, that, that did uh, stand out to me was that uh, I didn't really hear much difference in, uh, in running sounds when going over switches and points. Although I do believe they're probably overshadowed by the general running sounds, which uh, in my opinion are a lot better than train sim world and probably on par or even slightly better than uh, than what we have on Simrail. So let's close this. Now I wonder if once again, we aren't able to access the Locomotive 1 uh, version. I'm not sure what they mean by top up, but nothing really happens when I click there. Uh, we're unable to open it. So I guess we're just locked into these two for the demo. So in that case, let's head over to uh, the journey. It looks like we have quite a, uh, a career mode type of thing going on here. So we have a little uh, introduction to our route. We have, first of all, the map, which I absolutely love this, to be very honest with you. Uh, and also we have some different um, shifts. So it seems like these are various shift patterns. I know they're, they're just A to B and B to A, but nonetheless, these are actual shift patterns. So today your shift begins at Cologne Central Station. I'll let you guys pause this and read this in your own time. I'm going to do it, uh, but I'll skip it for this part. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it. All right, so we should be getting 2,000 credits or so, I guess, and uh, 100 XP. I'm not really sure what where we use these. I guess we'll see once the full game comes out, but nothing's really apparent to me uh, as of now. Um, also, I find it really weird that we start off by just looking at the, the scenery instead of looking uh, you know, straight ahead. Um, once again, let's uh, start the diesel engine and uh, let's open both doors seeing as I think both platforms are in use. I hope I'm not wrong. Um, so if I'm not sure whether this is a platform actually. So let me play safe and use this one over here. Especially since it has the uh, stopping marker there. And I have noticed that we do have an AI train although uh, it disappeared quite quickly. Uh, the wagons are still in, uh, still in frame but the loco itself seems to have just vanished so that was interesting but we've got a uh, 25 seconds left for board for boarding our next station is a uh, Köln Ehrenfeld and boarding completed so let's get our doors closed put her in forward and the uh, PZB make sure the brakes are released the train brake as well as the local brakes as you can see on the bottom right they're just about finished releasing and uh, we'll get it moving so you wait a short while, leave it until it goes up to about a kilometer. And I'm not sure on the bottom right what those numbers above the train is. I wonder if that's sort of like a G-force meter one way or another. Um, I haven't been able to figure that out just yet. So we are on the way with a 40 kilometer speed limit. Headlights on this time, that's good to see. Cologne main station looking uh, pretty fantastic to be honest. We've got the cathedral there as well. Got another AI service coming uh, towards the main station. So it's good to see some action. I actually don't have a clue what the timetable is like in terms of uh, relative to reality. I 
I'm not really seeing any ICEs, which as far as I'm aware, are present at Cologne main station. We do have one stable, however, right ahead of us, so that's slightly to the left. We do have some things going on on the siding, so it's, it's, I'm happy to see that they're not completely devoid of any life. Quite a violent uh, approach to the hill there. I wonder if it will be worth smoothing out their tracks just a little bit. Um, as they do seem slightly over aggressive. The thing is, it's, it's very difficult to find the medium between not overdoing, you know, the, the movement within the train, but also trying to immerse you you know, in a in, in a move, a large moving vehicle. But regardless, there is definitely uh, room for improvement. So you do get points, as you can see on the top left, for smooth braking. Although I'm not sure how long that will last. We are coming into the station a little bit hot. But we'll manage just fine. I'm very happy to see a working Ebula. I will, I will emphasize on that point once again. And you get 250 points for a precise stop as well. So we're going to be here for two minutes. While we are stopped, we'll take a look at the, uh, the station itself. So in terms of station detail, um, we do have what seems like an actual timetable here. Uh, two different style of timetables. I'm not sure how to slow the camera down. So forgive me for the um, quite quick movements. Have some rubbish on the on the platforms. We do like to see that. Well, we don't like to see rubbish, but it is it does um it does define pretty much uh, reality. And also the rubbish on the tracks. This I'm 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 extra impressed about. If I'm being totally honest. So earlier, I thought maybe it's just some bit of spray paint. And to be fair, at the end of the day, it does just look like random bits of spray paint. And I don't know whether that's the aim, whether it's intentionally meant to look like that. But I think it looks like trash. And as in, <laughs> not that I think they've done a bad job spraying. Um, I think it, it looks like rubbish, that is rubbish on the track, and even if it's not, look, no one's going to really zoom in and try and find the details of the wrappers which have been discarded onto the tracks, but just seeing it from a, uh, from a cab view, it's really, really good to see that, that extra detail, because uh, what we see in Train Sim World and uh, Sim Rail is quite uh, unrealistic, really. It, it would be lovely if we could have, you know, uh, the railway kept to a pristine condition but um that's not to be with regards to the uh, passenger information systems as you can see nothing unfortunately i've got no idea whether that's something that uh, will be brought in at a later date but i sure hope so that's something that both simrel and train sim will do very very well station interiors not modeled too well um again that's not something important you're not going to be walking around you're pretty restricted to flying about or sitting along in the cabin of course no passenger well not of course but there is no active screen inside the uh the passenger compartment as well i really would love to see some passengers it's been pretty quiet throughout today whether it's been the training modules or this um these runs And off we go to uh, our next station, Köln Mungersdorf. So I think I've worked out that the uh, green numbers on top of the train on the right, bottom right hand side is a power draw. It would be interesting to see how weather not only affects uh, performance, game performance, but also the train's adhesion and the environment in general as well. So apologies, I did think uh, Kern Mungersdorf was a uh, was a station, but it does say on the top left to go through. So we've just gone through it, and uh, also Lovenish, which we are also going straight through. We'll put a thrust all the way up to 15, and um, let the train do its thing. I let you guys judge the sounds for yourself, 
and uh, you can let me know down below what you guys think of it I think it's okay there is quite an obvious looping in my opinion and I think it definitely could be refined um, but for an early access for a demo so far so good So we've reached Horum. Again, not much going on. And uh, we didn't pass any further AI traffic. So hopefully that's something that will be improved upon before the game is fully released or out of um, early access. But yeah, once again, nothing really to report on. A pretty quiet run, pretty calm run. In terms of scenarios, I don't really see... Uh, a big difference from the uh, the journey mode, I'll call it. So I don't think there's too much to report in in terms of that. So far, as you can see, we only have two trains and we've driven both trains. I think my opinion on it is that there is a lot of potential. I do like the game, I'll be honest. The only my major gripe for me right now is the performance and uh, the lack of AI as well. I think if those two things get sorted, I think this game will be in with a real chance of coming against uh, the dominators within this genre right now. I know we've had pictures of several other trains. I wish we had a bit more to try out today. So far, this is all that we have access to. So yeah, like I said, it's promising i just hope that the passion that is needed and the hard work that is needed to make this into a heck of a game really does go into it because uh, yeah there's a lot that can that can come from this I, I believe so let me know down below is this something you guys are interested in is it something you'd also want to see more of on the channel i'd be more than happy to uh provide that for you or is it something that you'll just leave for now have your time with Simrel, have your time with Train Sim World, and when the fruit is ripe, then pluck this from the tree. If you've liked this video, please remember to give it a like. Please consider subscribing as well, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.